101.1 FM and AM 1160 and WCCSradio.com. Bob Pollock with us from the Extension Service. Conversation brought to you by Marcus and Mack, voted best personal injury law firm in the best of Indiana County contest. Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. He was just uh, reflecting, ruminating, if you will, on the weather for past Mother's Day weekends. Um, this uh, weather this weekend's not going to be so bad. No, not so bad. Yeah, we're okay with it. it. Yeah, in general, the trend has been upward. Mm -hmm. We've had a few cold nights. um, And looking ahead, Mm -hmm. as long as that's accurate, it looks like maybe one night next week down to 39, which could be colder in some spots of the county. Yeah. Like where you live. Uh, But everything Uh, else is is looking okay. Otherwise, it's looking fairly good. We'll take that. which, Which is good. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll sometimes take that. you know we get ahead of ourselves and we get into a little stretch of nice weather and we get anxious and plant things and put things out that maybe we should have waited a week or two on. Well, people but, wonder about at this time of the year when we've had such a mild winter that we had. Um, is there enough snowpack melt in order to replenish the water supplies? Um, that's not really a problem, is it, at this time of the year? Well, although... We could always use more, but... Right. Yeah. Just looking at where we are today, we're actually, for Indiana County, 0.6 uh, tenths of an inch uh, below normal for the year mm-hmm. for precipitation, whether that came as snow or sleet or yeah. rain. Yeah. Um, there's just a little stretch of the counties right on the western border going all the way up to Erie that are above normal. There was a couple fronts that came through a couple weeks ago that just slid north. The, they went from south to north and kind of missed us. Um, and then when you get to the whole eastern part of the state, they're anywhere from uh, well, almost almost two inches and more below normal. Is is it a valuable exercise at all for gardeners um, and farmers and, and people concerned about their lawns uh, to look at the long-range precipitation forecast for over the course of months to say, okay, the summer's going to be like this, therefore I should not plant or should plant that? I think it can be helpful to look at those trends or what the predictions are because we have those La Ninas and El Ninos Mm -hmm. Um, those different patterns that definitely can affect, you know, we can have maybe the trends for warmer temperatures and drier conditions. Okay. So that it's pretty hard to say exactly on your, you know, on your property where you're growing plants that Mm -hmm. those exact conditions will occur, but just kind of having a heads up that, Oh, this might be, what we're going to be into for the coming months can be helpful as far as whether, you know, just right now even, it looks like we're going to be pretty warm. So we're going to maybe hedge our bets and say, hey, I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to put extra things out or I'm going to go ahead and get um, my flower pots planted or some other maybe uh, uh, warmer season crops put in the ground. Uh, maybe a little ahead of normal just because of where where things are trending mm-hmm. um, and, and take that calculated risk. How about that? There you go. There you go. I want to ask you this, um, and it's a, it's a pretty serious issue. Um, farmers, of course, when they spray their pres- pesticides, they have to actually accumulate points by going to classes to make sure they're uh, handling them properly. Right. And, and, and yeah. using them properly. Yes. Uh, you know, maybe folks aren't aware of that, but farmers actually have to go to those in order to be eligible to use those those chemicals. Um, for, for home consumers concerned about bugs or about weeds and, and spraying weed killer and, and, and things of that nature, um, it, it's pretty important for them, too, of where they're spraying and what they're spraying. Uh, and, and I know that Extension, Penn State Extension uh, overall, they've got some wonderful materials online about uh, using those devices or those, those substances around your house. So, um, is there a, a general rule of thumb uh, for folks when spraying, for instance, uh, weed killers uh, uh, for 
So. Well, for safety's sake. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, we're always trying to go with the, the least risk, right? Or another way to look at that is let's try to use the safest options mm -hmm. that we can um, and kind of look at a menu of what options are available. And so we can sort those out by uh, least risk to a lot of things, both ourselves um, in using those, as well as, well, what are the potential effects to other organisms? Mm -hmm. um, so non-target uh, insects or diseases or, you know, any of the above, um, you know, and take a look at that and compare materials. It's a little harder for when you go and look on the shelf uh, in the local store to sort some of that out. A lot of that has to be done ahead of time, looking at what's labeled to control a particular pest. And that's another thing. Sometimes we don't really identify what it is, what's our target? What are we trying to control? Whether that be an insect, a disease, or a weed. Mm -hmm. And will, do we have the correct identification? We need to know what it is we're dealing with so that then we can start to look at, okay, well, what are our management options for that? What works? Mm -hmm. What doesn't work? What's labeled? What's not labeled? Um, Instead of just, oh, well, this is an insecticide, so it'll control insects. Well, yeah, but which ones? Yeah. Um, it, it might be very narrow in what it controls. Uh, it might be just specific to worms, um, and it won't do anything to the adults of a particular insect, mm -hmm. you know, um, or the eggs. And, and so we have to kind of read. You know, that's why they make those labels yeah. so that we can read those. Um, it identifies, you know, what, what's it, what it is used for, what the rates are. A lot of times we have a, a, ve um, a minimum and a maximum rate, a, a, a range. Um, Which is usually square feet or square mile or square yard. Yes, and it might be broken down into, you know, so much per acre, so much for square foot, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so much per yeah, just a given unit area, and then we've got to calculate, well, what's our area we're treating so that we can get the right am amount in a gallon of water, for example, yeah. um, to apply that. Surface insects versus underground insects as well. Yes. I, I know often we've had discussions about grub control. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And so, and, and a lot of, like for grub control, a lot of the materials are granular, mm -hmm. so we're, we're applying w them with a spreader. Um, and so we can calibrate that spreader, you know, whether you have a spinner spreader or a drop spreader, you can actually calibrate that. Um, a lot of, you know, spinner spreader usually has a dial on there with numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and so you select the number and as long as the product you're using uh, has, so set your spreader, if you have a certain brand of spreader, set it at this number um, and then that will hopefully deliver the correct amount of material uh, per given square footage. Mm -hmm. But you can actually calibrate that and double check that and make sure that it is is working. Yeah. So I know that uh, the extension um, website has a seminar right now. I think it's a four hour seminar. <laughs> uh, and I'm assuming that it is uh, more of a consumer type of uh, uh, discussion because they show a picture of a guy on a sidewalk. Uh, spraying beside his sidewalk uh, for for weed control. So if you have a, a hand sprayer, let's say you have a one uh, a gallon or one and a half gallon or two gallon sprayer that you can carry, pump up sprayer mm -hmm. um, with a wand. It is best not to try to use different products in there. If you're going to spray weeds, that sprayer should be dedicated Always to spray spraying weeds. weeds. Mm -hmm. Period. Just had a situation this week where, <laughs> and, and this was more on the commercial side, where somebody was new, they were starting, um, they felt they needed to spray their tomatoes, which were in a high tunnel, mm -hmm. and they used the same sprayer to spray an insecticide or fungicide that oh they used to spray Roundup to kill weeds. Uh -huh. The results weren't pretty. 
Um, <laughs> even okay. though they tried to clean it out or said they had mm-hmm. tried to clean that tank out. Yeah. Um, and different materials, different weed control materials leave different residues. Some are easy to clean out. Some are more challenging. Um, so it is just best insecticides and fungicides. You can use the same sprayer pretty much always. Mm-hmm. There might be one or two exceptions. Um, but for the most part, we can use a dedicated sprayer for those materials and then one for weeds. All right. Very good. Thanks, Bob. You're welcome. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM AM 1160.